face off in a Utah basin, but no, so far, none was able to, to do so without manipulating the motor inputs, mainly in their nitrogenocytes, NOx, and volatile organic compounds, VOC emission data. So improving the chemistry, the chemistry mechanisms uh, in the photochemical models were also performed by research groups in Rambo uh, environment and ourselves. Another front on the model improvements is toward simulations of meteorology conditions uh, with the objective to capture the stable atmospheric conditions uh, during winter and high, uh, during winter when high ozone occurred and to improve surface reflectance or albedos, uh, which would enhance the photolysis rate and therefore enhance ozone forming. Uh, effort on improving meteorology simulation performed for the Utah Basin has been exercised by uh, various research groups, including uh, from the University of Utah and also from ourselves, especially from my colleague Stranton. Um, uh, her work has been recognized, widely recognized by many researchers. So uh, in this presentation, is, we'll discuss on our latest effort in improving the meteorology aspect of the models in particular in improving its capacity in characterize the surface characteristic, including albedos, snow cover, and vegetation cover by using satellite data assimilation techniques. Uh, throughout this presentation, uh, in many times I will uh, mention about WAF and CAMEX. WAF stand for Weather Research and Forecasting Meteorological Models, which simulates and provide meteorology inputs for CAMEX, which is a comprehensive air quality model with extensions developed by Rambon's environment. Um, and, and, and this model is used to simulate atmospheric chemistry. Uh, before moving on with my presentation, I would like to take uh, this uh, time to acknowledge, uh, to acknowledge uh, Utah Division of Air Quality for provide uh, financial support for this project through the Science for Solution Research Grant this project also partially um, financially supported by the Utah Impact Mitigation District, uh, as well as from the Utah Leg Legislative uh, SB 118 funding. Um, my acknowledgement also comes uh, goes to Chris Emery from Rambone Environment for uh, peripheral nutrition and with uh, his willingness to, to help us uh, on so many problems with the models. Um, so. The story is in the first performance of winter ozone um, with the air quality modeling for the Utah Basin in 2014. The modelers has found that WAF uh, in its default configurations is unable to capture surface, surface and beetles as, um, as in comparison with observations. The so maximum ambidero simulated by WAF is typically below 0.7 whereas ambidero above 0.8 were commonly observed at several um, monitoring location in a Utah basin. Underestimation of ambidose obviously uh, would lead to underestimation of photo photolysis rate and therefore underestimate ozone formations. Um, many of us may have been familiar with the two pictures on the right, which I took from the presentations that uh, model modeler from UOU gave in the Edge Tab conference in 2015 and also were discussed in their Niemann on paper uh, would I provide a reference in the below. Uh, what it did, it, it did particular winter 2013 ozone episode is to lower the snow water equivalent thresholds for certain vegetation type in the model, uh, in the model grid. So that the grid cell is allowed to be fully snow covered with less snow on the ground. Uh, this modification then together with other mod modification performed by UU groups were able to get WAF simulate ozone above 0.8 However, as shows in the, the map on, on the left, the, the res, resultant ambidose looks unrealistic and makes the unit basically cut up our space from the surrounding area. Um, this is another example of what struggling with simulated surface ambidose in, in ozone uh, modeling episode in February uh, 2011 uh, for the a, um, air resource modeling study 2017 that we are doing for BOM. As shown on the left figure is a default WAP simulations which has low surface and beetles. Um, since for this episode we don't have as much observations of um, drought surface conditions as in the 2013 episodes, 
The only WAF modification that we perform is to initialize, initialize WAF simulation with observed EBITDA's value obtained from a few monitoring stations. This modification is a slightly increased EBITDA as shows in the figure on the right, but not as much um, as what we obtained in the 2013 episode. But nevertheless, the examples illustrate that the corrections are needed to be made to WAF in order to make it to capture specific characteristic, in particular in this case is uh, albedo. The corrections certainly have some uh, drawbacks. Um, first, they are performed on case by case basic and there is no standard method to perform those corrections. And they heavily rely on knowledge and observations of models on the actual surface conditions during the simulation episodes, which is not uh, always available. And they, they, they tend to be possible and they create a, re a realistic albedo distribution over the modeling domain. And come from the lack of ground observations for improving WAF performance led us to the idea of using satellite-based observations um, data for, for, for this purpose. And so here comes the model, the moderate uh, resolution amazing spectral radiometers, the MODIS data set that we utilize for, uh, for, for this um, uh, purpose. Now, uh, see, our objective is to improve walk performance with respect to surface and beetles, snow cover, and vegetation fractions. Uh, we limit to utilize certain modis data sets uh, with a list in this slide. Note that most of the data sets are in either 500 meter or one kilometer resolutions, which is considerably good for a regional modeling scale. And uh, the, 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 the temporal scale is in Delhi. Uh, one exception is from the light uh, line, leaf area index line data set, uh, which is in four days composite, and it has some um, limiting factors that will affect on the improving uh, work performance that I will um, discuss later. So this is how to um, illustrate our methods for processing and uh, stimulating modis data to work models. Own data was degraded from their original horizontal resolutions, again, either 500 meter or one kilometer resolutions to the model resolutions. In this case, we are running the model at 1.3 kilometers horizontal resolution. Um, the, the reading are using the, the Earth System mod, Modeling Framework, ESMF um, algorithms. The second simulation of satellite signal in the solar spectrum vector codes 6SV, we use the light to construct uh, the lookup table for diffuse radiation fractions, which is then used in the bi bidirectional reflectance distribution function, BRDF, uh, and video determination to determine diurnal values of snow and, and also as a spectral software uh, albedos. Um, except for the modest light because uh, due to its four day composites um, in, in terms of temporal resolutions. Uh, and we use it to, re to replace the original and climatology seasonal lights um, leap area index variable in what input files. On other modest, the drive quant quantities are incorporated into WAF survey nurturing modules before enter WAF core models and and after that, after WAF, the, the WAF CAM models are used to process WAF outputs and repair the meteorology input for, for CAMX model. So um, in order to incorporate more this data into WAF, a certain um, model circles had to be modified. And for some tech savvy models in the audience, at least here on the WAF codes that were modified, um, an assembly is the modification that we made to the WAF re registry file because we introduced a new variables in order to arriving the data simulations. Uh, those variables are the GLBs, SFC, and GNC, which stand for uh, snow cover fraction that uh, we introduced to the models. Uh, an important highlight in our approach is by a simulation modis data through the WAF survey nudging uh, models we are able to utilize all the standard options provided by these models to control the data simulations. Uh, for example, the turning the simulation on and off and how frequent um, WAF estimates is replaced by the MODIS data 
know, applying the weighting factors and ramping time and, and etc. So with on their effort that have been spent so far here, what we got figure on the left again show the surface and beta was simulate by what in a, its default configurations, and on the right is modest data uh, simulated with modest data simulations on on average across a winter episodes on February 1st to February 9, 2011. Uh, in comparison with the default config configurations, modus data simulation not only give higher ambido in the unit of basins, but also provides better spatial distribution of ambidos. It looks more realistic as one may expect. Um, and a, a side topic here, it's interesting that for Upper Green River Basin in Wyoming, that, that's shown in the top right corner of the, the domain, uh, more this, the more this assimilation gives somewhat lower ambido in comparison with a default work. So uh, for folks doing modeling at that reason, they may not happy with the modis data, perhaps. Um, the distribution of snow cover fraction also looks um, more realistic with modis um, assimilation than a default work. A snow cover is higher that uh, at in the high higher elevations as well as for flat terrains and then at low elevation on and, and steep slopes. Uh, on those, it should be pointed out that um, in a unit basin, the snow cover fractions are uh, kind of lower than uh, lower in the modded assimilations than uh, what we obtain from the default WAF. Um, in terms of lift error, uh, lift error index, uh, we see no noticeable difference um, between the modis data simulations and a default WAF configurations. Now recall that the, there is the less frequent of modis lift error index. Um, because of that, um, is we're injecting to WAF through the WAF in, input uh, rather than through the WAF uh, surface nurturing model. And, after long enough of simulations, modest light kind of phase out and replace with WAF estimate and the lift area index values between the two simulations kind of absorb, approximate to each other. Um, this finding suggests that maybe we need a better approach um, to assimilate the, the, the modest, um, the, uh, the satellite observations lift area index, but I, it may not be possible until um, better of frequent leaf area index to become available. Um, so the improvements in surface and bureau as well as in snow cover obtained with MODIS simulation does not necessarily translate to better performance of WAF in simulating other meteorology quantities. So as shown in this figure, uh, compare the observation of up two meters water mixing ratios on the top and the ambient temperatures on the bottom. Um, from um, compared between the modis that uh, simulation and default WAF, uh, default WAF in red and modis um, the simulation in blue across all 19 monitoring stations in the uh, motor domain. And the statistical score showed no significant difference between the two cases. And there was uh, some even worse in modus uh, for in some days. The same situation is observed for SEMA estimate of uh, 10 meters wind speed and wind direction. Again, no significant um, difference um, obtained from the modus as a uh, simulation. Um, looking at the time evolution of WAF's estimate of snow depth, snow water, uh, water equivalent, and snow cover between the default uh, WAF configuration in red and in MODIS uh, assimilation blue, we see that the difference between the two cases uh, of the quantities become larger towards the later in the episode. Uh, snow in a default WAF. Uh, seems to be either melt or sublimate quicker than what's seen in the modus uh, assimilations. So this implies that the albedo and snow cover retain higher value long, retain their higher value longer in with the modus that the assimilations, um, which may translate to a positive effect in terms of ozone forming. Uh, forming. 
So seeing CAMEX um, take meteor meteorological input from WARF, uh, one would expect that all the improvement performing WARF would just carry over to CAMEX, but it turns out that's not simple because uh, CAMEX determines all albedos and snow cover fractions at the function of snow water equivalents, snow age, and land use type. In fact, at the beginning of the simulations, if there is a lack of information on snow age, CAMEX may assume ambido of near fresh snow, um, and therefore the CAMEX estimate ambidos may be even higher than what estimated by WAF before it become decreasing uh, gradually at the snow age. Uh, so in order to have CAMEX to take in the, the modus ambidos, uh, estimate uh, as, uh, the modus assimilate ambido from WAF, we have to do some modification to a CAMEX soil codes. Uh, and again, we at least on the, uh, the soil code that we, uh, that we uh, modify in order to, for, for that purpose. These include modification make to the WAF CAMEX module so that modus uh, albedo and snow cover fractions are reading to our uh, CAMEX input. Uh, however, the, and probably because of the fresh snow effect in CAMEX that I just mentioned before, we found that in this particular simulation episode, the default CAMEX albedo may be higher than the modus albedo at the beginning of the episodes at almost on grid self in a unit basin. And it becomes lower uh, than modus albedo later a few days. Um, this whole figure shows that photolysis of uh, NO2 and the, the tip, uh, the triplet, um, triplet, ozone, uh, triplet and singlet ozone simulate with MODIS, uh, which is in a red line and at URA and red one started at um, lower rate than that simulated by the full WAF, which is in blue line, but it become larger um, toward the end of episode. Um, so if you have pet close extensions to the, to the header of the slide, we should notice that this slide had the same header of the two slides uh, back before, because they imply the same underlying cause snow, uh, that snow seems to be melt or sublimate quicker in the walk before simulations than um, what simulate with uh, more data simulations. Another potential reason for the greater photolysis rate in the four walk at the beginning of episodes is due to the fresh snow effect in CAMEX that I also mentioned earlier. Uh, but in terms of uh, ozone uh, simulations uh, as the effect of modulated simulations, uh, this figure in this slide compares simulate ozone under various scenarios with observed values um, at URA monitoring site. Blue and red lines represent ozone in default WAF, CAMEX, uh, and modus configuration respectively. We also add to this figure ozone simulate with the what CAMEX sim configuration that we perform for the ARMS uh, modeling study with these in green. And uh, it's noted that none of the simulation scenarios, including the MODIS, was able to capture high ozone above 70 ppb occurring within these episodes. But this finding is with, within our, our expectations because discrepancy in WAF model is, is, has been considered not the key factor leading the ozone under rest emissions. But red and uh, red, red are uh, on clues so far have points to the discrepancies in the emission inventory as a major factor. Uh, regardless, it seems that MODIS uh, simulation improved ozone performance over other scenarios toward the, uh, the later in the episode. Um, uh, we will extend the simulations for a longer episode to fully evaluate the effect of MODIS uh, that are simulation in, in the CAMEX model. Uh, sorry, where's where's that? Dr. Chen, we're getting pretty close to uh, to your time. Okay. Um, sorry, some somehow I'm looping. Yeah, I'm, I'm lost. I'm, I'm somehow I've lost track of the slide. But in summary, um, 
the modest um, um, the modest uh, data simulation improve what can maximize the performance, but uh, it depends on how you look at it. Um, in terms of ozone performance, CAMEX and perform CAMEX performance and other meteorology quantity of work for this data simulation does not give significant improvement, and in some cases even worse. However, it eliminates the guesswork from model uh, in dealing with what discrepancies in simulating surface and beetles and snow cover. And, and therefore eliminate ex extra bias that would have been introduced into the modeling system. A positive effect for this uh, simulation is very different uh, simulation episodes and length of the episode as well. This is because of each simulation episodes had different uh, work inputs with associated bias and, 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 and the same is true for modest data for that episode. The effect of the technique could also be more Potentials in the inline coupling meteorology and chemistry models set at WorkCam because maybe WorkCam will, um, will take the, the simulate ambient directly and without extra calculation step in between. Uh, better resolutions of uh, a more frequent satellite data sets in futures will enhance the benefit of satellite. And, and most importantly, um, this project is just our first step in, in using satellite data to improve the current discrepancy in uh, both meteorology and chemistry models. In future, we will investigate using satellite data to in, to correct uh, overestimation of cloud coping work and uh, using the chemistry observations from satellite systems as um, possible for me to improve the photochemical uh, model performance. So with that, I will um, my with that I have and I will. I wonder if it's still uh, time for me to take any questions.